Greetings, folks. Little pop-up stream today. Unexpected pop-up stream. Decided to come on for a little bit while I work on some Call of Cthulhu stuff uh, for the upcoming Total Confusion. Work on some characters, creating, modifying some existing characters. So, uh, things are... Things are growing. As you can see, I'll have to redesign this title card. I just did a quick update. Newest thing, of course, is the Patreon for Fox and Board Games. It's growing steadily, which is nice. It's always it's always exciting to see that. Um, I'll show that in a minute. Thanks to everyone, of course, from here and elsewhere who has subbed to that. Uh, custom content will be will be appearing shortly, just for subscribers. Game content just for subscribers, which is pretty cool. Uh, so let's see. You're watching From the Tomes on Twitch. You know that. Also check out the YouTube. I already mentioned the Patreon and www.foxandboardgames.com. Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at Fox and Board Games. Thanks a lot for everybody who has subscribed, liked, followed along. All of that, all of that fun stuff that has kept this going and kept me doing it. Uh, as most of you know, if you watch regularly, I have been reducing this to once every two weeks. Wednesday night is the focused tavern chat where we discuss a gaming topic or or I give a little presentation. This past week was on mythical items and how they've impacted our idea of magical items and RPGs. That was kind of interesting. Before that were several weeks worth of the OGL scandal and debacle. Thanks for thanks for all the content there, there Hasbro and Wizards. Seems to have calmed down. I don't know if it's calmed down or not. I guess we're gonna find out next year when they release five point five. Um, but otherwise, you know, I've been doing a lot of writing for the game, so it's been a little difficult for me to do intensive book writing and chat at the same time. It just doesn't work. I I'm not a person who can get a lot done doing that. Some people can. If I'm just taking notes or whatever, today I'm going to be working largely on formatting character sheets. I've made six characters. I'll go over that in a minute. I've made a bunch of characters for the various games. Um, but really, really briefly, I mentioned the Patreon before. And let's get over to the work share. I guess we'll drop. I guess we'll drop the like and subscribe scene. So this here's the Tales of the Hard Land is the banner, of course, because that's my main project at the moment. Um, then Patreon, you get all kinds of nice things. Here's some of the character work I was doing the other night that I posted there. I'm going to be posting a lot more exclusive content for patrons, and even at the basic level, at you know five bucks or eight bucks, you'll get a lot of content. You'll get a lot of behind the scenes notes. You'll get a lot of Little goodies I'll post up there. Uh, whereas at ten dollars to twenty dollars, you're going to see more content, custom, usable, usable game content just for uh, patrons. And the custom content is in fact going to be as best as I can universal. So it doesn't matter if you're playing D and D or Pathfinder or even a modern game, you will be able to use a good amount of what I put up there. I, I hope. I hope. It might be an NPC. It might be a map area. I mean, obviously some of it might be genre specific. If you run a hard sci-fi game, you know, 1920s house might not suit you, but I have a, I'm going to try to really gear stuff. So let's say if you're running fantasy or, or recent future or a semi-historical, you can use a lot of the content with a little bit of modification. We'll see how that goes. So that's where I'm at right now. Um, with that... So again, big thanks to everybody who has, in fact, signed on to that. Definitely has been a big help. A little doubling there. Audio. <clears throat> so, um, yeah, there's that. Still working on, I had some... Another successful D&D &D game last week, Intro to D&D, &D, had four brand new players. It was really fun. And I've got some other stuff coming up. I've got another another of the intro games coming up. 
and I have another session of Cold Plague. I have a Tales of the Hard Land session, and I've got a um, an experimental D and D game scheduled for April. I think I did or March twenty eighth. I don't have any subscriptions yet, but if you're interested in playing a kind of weird something Ravenloft, Ravenloft Gothic horror esque combined with a little bit of Game of Thrones. Um, feel feel free to jump on and try that out. It's an un it's it's a setting I used a bit of for my long term two year D and D campaign that was only kind of the snippet of this other realm, heavily inspired by the concepts in Ravenloft, but not specifically Ravenloft. Uh, so it 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 did that was very much like the existing characters getting a little tour of it. This is going to be kind of an in-depth investigation, a part of that world. And it should be should be kind of interesting. If I have to go manage adventures now and adjust something on this adventure. Um, but I will I will share that in an adventure. I forgot to I forgot to allow a an early sign up. Oops. So, um, people can early book and get a little bit of a discount. So, it's a little more expensive, too, because it requires a little bit more work. And I've had a lot of people say things like, oh, now charging for GMing, that's kind of strange, or paying someone to play a game. So, first of all, you know... Having done it for many years and run it in a way that it's either, you know, literally just me sitting down with a, a page of notes on a napkin and running a, a five to eight hour game off of that, off the top of my head. I've done that usually with people who I know very well and with characters I know very well versus spending maybe, maybe... 20 30 hours prepping a game roll 29 yeah um so you know part of what you're paying for this is this kind of goes to the same discussion as when you say i'm gonna hire a musician but i only want to pay them 25 bucks because you know they're only playing for a half an hour well uh, you know that doesn't count forget the cost of any instruments which for any professional musician is not going to be 200 bucks you know at guitar center you're talking at minimum two, three thousand for a gig. Uh, forget that. Forget the hours and hours of practice, but the amount of time they had to prep alone just for your gig. It's a very similar thing with pro GMing. That you know, when I doing a pro GM stint, as you're going to see momentarily from uh, this game, Cold Plague. You know this. This did not. There's my other. There's my alt that I that I have in the game just so I can look and see how things look as an alt. You know, this is this is all prep custom for this game. I'm not running a pre-generated module and charging twenty five bucks a player a session for 10, 15 sessions like some people. This is all stuff that I have in fact created specifically for this game. That usually lasts three. They usually last about four hours. I think four and a half hours is the tightest we've gotten it, including all these nice characters. I mean, okay, you have your stats, but if you go here, you know, I've actually got a story for each character, and and you know, it's yes, it's this has been a hobby my entire life, um, but I I feel I'm at the point that if I'm going to go out there, and if I'm going to do this as more than just for my group of friends. You know, I'm going to really make it, I'm going to really put the time in, do a lot of preparation, make it really high quality. And I don't have any problem charging for that, considering I've already heard accounts, personal accounts of people paying a game master, even 15, 20 bucks to play a game for four hours. And they show up with like nothing prepared. And they're like, oh, I'll just wing it. You know, come on. That's, that's not, when you call yourself a professional GM, just winging it isn't isn't what you should be doing. 
So that's actually what I'm doing today. So I've got this game now. I don't get paid specifically for the games at Total Confusion. Um, I do, in fact, get a, a I get comped into the convention, plus some like bonus merchandise and stuff, depending how many of my games run. They're all full at the moment, except for one, which I have a feeling is going to fill up probably day of. So, you know, but I want to deliver that same level of quality. And to me, that's what separates a quality game and a quality experience of somebody really invested in making it a fun game and telling a story versus I'm sitting down with my three friends and just kind of throwing a game together. Um, and that's great, too. I love doing that, too. Some of the most fun games I can remember, are, you know, sitting around with just a couple of people who I know and just throwing together this kind of impromptu storytelling adventure. But that's not what people want to pay for, right? So my dilemma is I, I have these characters that... Oh, I have to actually open this in. to open this in my other browser. I have these characters that are, are like pretty much set to go. And I can print them, but the formatting is really, really ugly. I found a printer plug-in so that you can print Roll20 characters. And the problem is they, the print, now part of it is I am working off of a, working off of a laser printer. I'm not, I don't have a, a high-end color printer here, largely just because I feel they're too extent, expensive to maintain. So this looks like it would print fairly well, right? I mean, this gives me, a fairly high quality full screen character sheet. But then when I go file, print here, I mean, it's functional and maybe that's for, for this game. That's all I need is something functional, but there's like zero formatting here on the final print copy. And I, you know, as I said, for a game that I'm, well, I'm here saying I'm a professional GM. Come sign up for my games. To hand a person a character that looks like this, I think, is a sheet that looks like this at a convention, I think is kind of self-defeating. I don't think it's very, I don't think it's very nice. Um, aesthetically pleasing. You know, a lot of players don't care. A lot of game masters don't care. I do. Like, if I were, if some guy were saying, oh, hey, you know, come to Roll20 and, or start playing games or come to another convention and play my games. And they handed me a character that had like pretty much no formatting and no coherence to the sheet. I'd be like, yeah, no. I mean, I might play the game with them and have fun at the convention, but I certainly wouldn't seek them out to be a pro GM. That's just me. Hot takes. Um, you know, that's kind of like when you put submission guidelines up and I've already had this happen. I have some submission guidelines up for Fox and Boar Games. And, you know, they're, they're pretty specific submission guidelines. And I have a PDF right here that you can download and read it. And I'm getting people sending me Google Drive documents that's just like their GM notes. Like, oh, could you, could you think about publishing this adventure? And it's just like basically their GM notes on a Google Doc. I'm like, I have no clue. I have no clue what I'm looking at and i've been in the publication and i've worked to professionally publish so i kind of have an understanding of how it works <clears throat> so the alternate that i thought of is, is screenshotting some of this stuff um and that that i met with you know limited you know moderate success if i pop out this window and then i screenshot it and then i kind of bring this up in Photoshop and make any adjustments I might need to it. And that's like a whole lot of extra labor. So then am I like, well, do I just use Dole's house, which I've been touting on my various 
various social media um, as this, you know, this great way. No, don't get a new character. As this great way to work with. Can you see when I pop it out? You can't see when I pop it out. That's okay. You won't need to see it in a very long. The Dole's House is this great fan driven Call of Cthulhu site. And, you know, he made, the guy makes a lot of content and character creators for it. And I, you know, let's see, do I get all my skills on one page if I pop this out? No, I don't. I mean, again, I could just put the stats. So this is going to require a lot of extra work. Which I'm not object to. So I'm just wondering if this is going to be worth it or if i should just remake the character and copy and paste stuff i mean that might really be the solution on the fresh auto calculation sheet you know like stuff like the like that the has or they have really nice sheets in which i could just copy and paste all this stuff so Call, do I call this a flask? A flash? It's supposed to be a flask. I'll have to put on edit. Flask. During Prohibition, that flask is valuable. Serves you better in Call of Cthulhu than your, than your 38 does, right? Or sorry, your 32. Ivar Johnson revolver. A little pistola. I'm happy to own one. From a, from a relative... Who may have had one in the twenties? No, they weren't. They weren't a gangster. They were actually a cop. Cop slash security guard. Um. So. Yeah. So I'm, I'm leaning towards using the super nice Call of Cthulhu sheets and um, just making the characters over in that format. That'd probably be faster. Even though I thought maybe I could just cobble together in Photoshop. I'm like, by the time I size everything, size and then print screenshots almost seems ridiculous. So it looks like we might be taking a visit to the Dole's house. What's a Dole, you ask? In Call of Cthulhu lore, it's, it's, like, it's like a sandworm basically your doomed sandworm so here are the characters I've already made these characters are really nice in terms of um, the finished sheets you pull some pull one of those up and I guess I don't need to run Photoshop and I that's okay So by the way, I'm also thinking of starting some under the advisement of my social media manager and marketing manager. I uh, am, am considering doing some additional streams on other platforms besides Twitch. Uh, again, Twitch draws a gaming audience. That's wonderful. But especially if I start some prime time streams geared towards a broader audience, I've got a couple things, a couple things that I'm looking at. So let's make let's make this other batch of characters so that's all done. So the convention's in oh just about two weeks. Not this weekend, but the following weekend. But I really need to make sure everything is ready to go in case I have to run prints of additional content. Uh because there's some of the stuff I might get printed at a print shop. No, staples, not a print shop. 
their self-serve print. And by the way, so if people are wondering like, wow, this is cool, you have this Patreon and you want me to buy stuff from you, like what exactly does it get me? You know, in addition to getting content that you can use for your games, it in fact does also do things like fund my outing to these conventions to help promote the game. It helps fund the cost of very subscription accounts I need to fund the game. So it, you know, I'm not I'm not using it to go buy beer. Yeah. I'm going unless that's an expense at a convention, um a business expense. But I am going to I am going to be using anything I make from Patreon to help fund the game project exclusively. And I do have an LLC and uh, its own entity coming in in the next two months. So it's going to be, it's legit. It's not just like, hey, give me money for my game. I remember the, uh, the one band I worked with. The first thing, the first thing that the guy, one of the band members did, a new band member was put up a GoFundMe for like a $15,000 sound rig for use with the band. It was, it was for him. It wasn't for use with the, I mean, it was, but it was kind of weird because it was like, all right, so you just joined this band and all of a sudden you've got your own GoFundMe for, you know, your rig for this band. Like we haven't even done a show together yet. So this isn't one of those cases. This isn't one of those kind of kind of cases where you look and think, well, where is that money going to go? From the tomes. Pro GM. Just going to my folder, seeing what I already have. So for cold plague, so um, I have all the characters for that saved. Journal, I have the maps. Uh, online character port. Yeah, here we go. Here's the character stuff. Good. Glad I saved it all because that would have been really annoying had I not saved that all. Um, cool. All right, so I have everything I need. So now I just have to go to the Dole's house. Let's see me make some call, make some call of Cthulhu characters. By the way, I also have a new Xfinity fiber optic line in. So far, it's been much more stable than Comcast. Pouring my whiskey. No, pouring water. Okay. English investigators. Characters. A new character, free point. So I just will copy over what I have. Uh, 40, 50. Uh, Fortunately, I have to do it like this. There's no decision making involved. Dex to 60. Uh, let's see. Con is 50. Oh, so let's name them. So this is. Um, The journalist. Investigator journalist. All right. That's how easy it is, folks. Working with the Dole's house. Working at the Dole's house. I'd like to work at the Dole's house. I might, I might consider making that a job if I could work at the Dole's house.
made a note out to my friends about the stream. So let's see. Parents of 80. Parents of 80. Oh, that's right. It's funny, I saw somebody say um on the on the one called Cthulhu board, like, oh appearance. And I, I understand in in modern sensibility we've you know, broadened our idea of what attractive is and why, why we might be attracted to someone. And most people are actually, they might be somewhat motivated by appearance, but that's not necessarily the be all end all. But you know, the person was saying, well, what, what good's appearance? You know, that's not really a useful statistic. <laughs> now guaranteed it doesn't have the same game applications as some of the others. You don't, you don't usually roll your appearance to avoid getting hit by a falling branch. There's cat and dog interaction going on there. It's getting up to feeding time, that's why. Um, but whether we like to admit it or not, our initial impression of somebody, of their appearance, often has... See, a cat of Althar has appeared. Um, our initial impression of someone, our first impression of their appearance makes a big difference even though a lot of us don't like to admit it right a lot of us like to think well, we're we're open-minded enough that the appearance appearance doesn't make that much of a difference i'm like but your initial impression is still very largely based on appearance and especially for someone who is a uh, a face character who does almost all the social interactions in the group if they're part of the part of the group i mean that's a pretty big deal let's see providence rhode island new york city So you fill out this initial stuff and then you just click save and continue. And of course you can adjust all this later. So there's no real adjustments for age. This is an old school game where your character can get better or worse during character creation. Process the updates. So now we have photography and charm as the two main skills. Two of their core skills that they automatically get an amount allotted to. Um, let's see. give them a spot hidden and being a reporter maybe something knowledge based that'll be that'll pertain to the game you know part of this is in my mind there are all these things this character can in fact can in fact do or that would have some useful role-playing aspect but what, what do I want them to do in the game? How do I want them to function in the game? Like disguise would be perfect, but it doesn't really make, the, make a difference for this scenario. So I think I'm going to give them spot and listen. I mean, that seems almost like, yeah, of course, but... All right, so the credit rating. So, I, so you get a number of skills now that are specific to the character makeup and character choices and are specific to the um, uh, 
the the the, the profession of the character. I mean, I don't know if I I oh man I gotta go back. All right, uh, I gotta go all the way back here. That was a mistake because I didn't put this to max nineteen twenty. So I got now I gotta go back to Providence, Rhode Island. <laughs> New York City. We've got Mickey. Oh, I have to redo all these. Great. Thanks. Uh forty. The exterior is sixty. Int is 60, con is, now I'm just using, I'm using what they call the quick fire method where you just take a certain amount and allot it to various skills, whereas the Dole's house only allows point by. So I could just save this out to the PDF, like get it to a point, save it to PDF, but it makes me spend all the points. So I kind of have to go through this process and get the things close to where I want them. And I can go and later on, 80. 80 power, I think I said it as 65, 50. Power does take, does have some level of contribution to this scenario. It's not a magic heavy scenario. Characters don't have time to learn arcane spells, but they do have to do something that requires power. Power 50 size, 50. Cat, which one do I have? Right, go play with the dog. I'm not being sarcastic. He really likes playing with that dog. Fifty-five. All right, so now think I class 1920 now I have to reset that save and continue so now we have to go through process updates now we go back to photography and charm and listen and spot hidden there's a cat chewing on my finger because they're about to starve to death all right back to where I needed to be I give him a, oh, can I do 30 credit rating? That's no, all right. Make them a little, little poor. History, so let's first do um, photography. The cat is being very interactive. So their photography skill is that. I think I gave them a. and craft photographer 50 really only 50 well i guess they're not a photographer they're they're a journalist with a camera so um if i have extra points i'll throw a couple extra charm is way up there that's like they're, they're the most social character in the group and depending how long the scenario runs depends on how much they would use the social skills. Spot hidden is 70. Yeah, that's what I thought. Whoop. Nope, not 90. So I can even I can even bump them up. So in the, when I did the quick fire method for the online game. Psychology. Well, this will work out to about the same. 
25 points left. Own language, English. They are an English speaker. Library is, I think I give them a reasonable library is. Because that also deals with other forms of investigation. Sixty, so I don't have quite enough points to give them the sixty library use, but that's that's okay, um, especially for the convention version of this scenario. They're not really going to have a lot of library use. It's such a crucial part of the game that I wanted to include it, but in the end, I found that it was just easier um, to give them information that doesn't require. Quite as much. Quite as much of that. Do a little bit more history. There we go. That's it. Those are the main points. So I save that. And now I have, what, 120 points to spend? So I think I gave them some I get the credit rating I got. Dodge, you give them some dodge. Dodge dodge doesn't hurt. 30% dodge. Drive auto, 20%. Sleight of hand, 10%. So library use, I can I can raise that a little bit now. Um I give them a little bit of a cult. Yes, I did. A little bit of a cult. A little, bit of a little bit more library use. Though there's there's two researchers in the group. They, they don't really need to. Know. It's a little fast talk, too. A little bit of handgun. So it's funny. I've had somebody say, <clears throat> Oh, reporter. Why do they need a handgun? And I'm like, Well, we're a reporter in the 1920s. Life was a little different, and, and the view of guns was a little different, too. Again, guns hadn't quite become politicized yet. Alcohol had been. Stealth is not bad. We'll give you a little bit of stealth. Uh, throw the track. They don't have intimidate. I don't really know. They give a little anthropology, a basic understanding, a little psychology, if I don't have that. How much psychology did I give them initially? 40%. There's a cat who's quite enjoying chewing on my chewing on my sleeve and therefore on my arm. Cat, you do not know what you do. Um, anthropology. Basic kind of understanding of the development of people and human human civilization and why things happen and progress. I think that's about it. Navigate, 10. Locksmith, that's right. I gave them a little bit of locksmith. Because, you know, reporters never have been known to, at least in Pulp Fiction, never been known to break into someone's office to learn something, right? Okay. So there's anything else I want to take away to give them more locksmith. Because 15% in this game, it is the game where once you get below like 30% on a skill, you're kind of like, do I spend anything on it, right? Is it worthwhile? Maybe I'll reduce fast talk a little bit. Yeah, it's already at 40. You know what, though? For the for the scope of this scenario... Do they need a lockpick? They, they can use it. All right. I think it looks good, because I can adjust this later. So, save this. So then it brings you to this sheet... And 
let's let's see how the character portraits look. These are really nice modern color character portraits. Uh, choose and change portrait. They are free free portraits for Call of Cthulhu. Let's move browse and let's go over to. Uh, yep, yeah, not that one. This one. And now it's. Online character portraits. So this is, in fact, a man. No, it's not Amanda. It's Mickey. Let's see how that looks. It's going to look great in color. I don't know how it's going to look in black and white. Oh, click upload. Silly me. So it looks pretty good in color. Uh, I'm afraid in black and white it's going to get kind of kind of messy. But let's see. So go back to character control panel. Here is where I do want to give them firearms to because it actually fills in everything. So add a weapon and add a 32 revolver. Uh, do I have to save that? Let's see if I have to save that. Let's see a save panel here. So character control panel. All right, so now is when I go to uh grayscale character sheet these are really nice sheets i think we'll pop it up right in another window here so yeah i mean again unfortunately the black and white i'm gonna lose some lose some on the black and white print but here it is here's a call of cthulhu character now i have all this my story my description you know and i could just cut and paste this but let me open it up from the drive first like page and if I go over to downloads, I'm going to put them all in downloads right now so I could then just move them all over to one sheet. Let it populate. And share. Uh, oops. Nope, nope. Wrong button. Wrong window. Right right button, wrong window. Well, not the right button either. If I go here and go to work share. And uh, up here. So there's there's the character sheet. It's pretty nice looking, right? And that's all for free. And Cassium fully supports it and endorses it. And I don't I don't know if there's a place to contribute to the Dole's house financially, but I, I do want to contribute to the Dole's house because it's super cool. And I've already used it a lot for creating stuff for scenarios. So it's how to use the Dole's house to create Mickey O'Greer, the reporter, investigative journalist. And 
as I was saying before, now that you can see the sheet, I have you know my story and all that. That's already all done in the Roll20 sheet. And all her equipment... Personal description. Drop that in here. If you notice, I kept this non-gendered. I mean, some of the characters are distinctly gendered, but in, in Mickey's case, I've, I've seen Mickey played as a woman and as... Uh, a trans woman so a biological woman and a trans woman so it's kind of interesting seeing a different take and i had a little discussion earlier on the call of cthulhu board about the authenticity of the 1920s and how you know bigotry was kind of the way it was especially in america and um you know i said that The reality is there have always been trans people. There have always been people of color in, in positions of society. But we've kind of ignored that. And so I have no problem with my player characters or my players choosing their character to be any way that they wish them to be. All right. Okay. The Herald of the Times out of Providence. And I'm going to flesh this out uh, from the society. Let's see what the Massachusetts Medical Society out of Boston feels this could be a major breakthrough. Feels. The epidemic on the Cape. The Cape. I probably won't be getting to the Cape next week, unfortunately. Uh, it could be a major breakthrough. I mean, it's things like character traits and all this. This is this is already all somewhere else. Uh, your role is a Interviews. That's the problem is that's going to lead them to think there should be a lot of interview situations. You work under the camera. and beliefs I have that here uh, oh yeah that's right she's a well there they are a spiritualist which was a real religion whoops spiritualist um, significant people this is where it's fun people have had fun playing with this stuff again it it really runs the gamut. My intro to D and D group, they really were not equipped to do a lot of role playing. They really just wanted to kind of learn the game and see what would happen. Um, whereas the Call of Cthulhu group, you know, they had only really played a little bit of Call of Cthulhu. They were really into the role playing. Flask. Full of brandy with a sapphire on it. There we go. Encounters the strange entities. Not yet. Just wait till this adventure. And you'll get all the strange entities. So there's so there is Mickey O'Greer. Yeah, that's much faster than trying to play around with 
adjusting and editing the online content. Um, all right, cool. Well, I'll create another character. So I'm here to do. I'm gonna take a little break, and I will create another character. All right. Low pressure system's coming in. I woke up with a headache. And that's pretty rare these days. Uh, so I think we're done with her. So let's pop open John Bolero. Truck driver and... Truck driver and mechanic, and also kind of the strong arm of the party, when uh, when the investigators need some need some muscle, he's the guy. He's he's fun to see played. 
He's also an army vet, World War One vet, so he's not just a schlub. So we got Mr. Bolero. Go back to the pop that sheet out. And then jump over to character creator. And let's create a new character sheet. Call of Cthulhu sales have soared in recent weeks. Yay, finally. Company that's been on the fringe of all this for so long, but they just kept going. So, looking at Mr. Bolero's statistics. I'll put him up on another sheet. I hope I saved that. Or did I save what I just did to Mickey O'Greer? I think I did. Yes, I did. Luckily, saving documents has become reflexive for me. All right, so the appearance is uh, 70, 70, 60. Fifty. Constitution's 80. Appearance, 50. Power, 50. I actually made another soldier type character for the other scenario who's not like him personality wise or or whatever but you know similar similar vibe I right, give Mickey for luck 45 well, it's not bad survived World War one so I guess his luck is is not too far off right? Uh, class of 1920s maximum. Let's not make that mistake again. So, John Bolero. Good old Boston Italian. How old is Mr. Bolero? 31. Oh, nope, other way. Can I just enter that? So, yes, okay, cool. Soldier. Yeah, you know, I don't know if I'm going to do a soldier. Let's make him that. Uh, Boston. Boston. Boston at night. And Boston at night. Everything looks good. Save and continue. Uh, don't have to make any adjustments or process updates. And let's see, climb, climb or swim. Let's have a swim. There might be swimming involved in this scenario. Mechanical repair, perfect. Choose two. Oh, let's see. Did I give him another language? Did I give him German? Languages. Own. I think I said at one point someone asked if he would speak any German. I say my probably knows the basics, being in, having been in World War One, but he's not fluent. Fluent. Um, so let's give him some first aid, just because that's not really gonna hurt. So credit rating forty. Got him something. Oh, only let me go up to thirty. All right, that's fine. Dodge thirty, fighting. Yeah, he's pretty. He's pretty good fighter, if I remember correctly. In all respects, I mean, he was a soldier. So 
Clue's job was. So firearms, handgun. I think I give him at least no, 50, which makes sense because a, a field soldier doesn't use as much handgun as they do rifle. I think he's a 70 or 75, 80 at a rifle. So he should be able to hit something. Stealth, he's not bad at. Hmm, only 20 stealth. I guess he's not a sneaky type. Survival, it's pretty... I have to pick survival. Did I? Maybe he didn't get survival. Doesn't make sense he didn't have survival. Uh, Stealth throw the natural world. Hmm. I don't see survival here. Doesn't really make sense. Uh, well, let's see what else he got. If he hey, gave him some first aid. I knew he had some of that in the game. 30, right? Mechanical re mechanical repairs, actually, is a big one. That'll probably dump most of his points. He has 80, 61 points left, so... Yeah, he's... Yeah, I think in the game, he's he's the guy that had... Let's see, firearms, handgun. No point of handgun. There. Another handgun allotment. Soldier can never have too much gun skill. Oh. Ah, okay. Uh. Save it and move it on. I can always add stuff here, too. Now, I'm not going to go through and, and do all the characteristics, the secondary characteristics on the sheet. Not secondary characteristics, the background story stuff. Because I'm going to do that later with just cutting and pasting. But I'm just going to try to blow through these characters to get the sheets done now. And then go fill in all of the background material uh, probably later off, you know, off screen. Just for no other reason. It just is easier. Oh, sorry, his electrical repair, too. He's... Pretty good at that. Not as good as mechanical. Not bad. Drive is the other thing. So he has a lot of drive. Let's give him a 60 drive. That takes up a lot of his points already. To go to electrical repair. And that's probably going to be pretty much it. Language own English. And again, these are for, this is for a very encapsulated two to three hour scenario at the convention. I'm not particularly worried about giving them all these deep traits for role play purposes. You know, if someone wants to come and play Call of Cthulhu more with me and, and make a more developed character, they are absolutely, absolutely fine with that. Oh, yes. That's right. Spot hidden is, isn't bad, but his listen's really bad from... All the guns going off in his ears over the years. And yes, when I make these characters, I do kind of think that. I Maybe not as in-depth as if it were going to be for like really permanent, permanent games. So for now, again, I can go and alter these on the sheet layer. And this is going to be a case where I can do that. And I'll show you that. I'm just going to save this. And then I'll upload... Because you know, I can actually manually go update all the characteristics here. Like if I want to give him 20 extra points in first date, I can do that because that it allows you to do that. GM override, if you want to call it that, which is pretty handy. Hello to the viewers who have popped on. I know Blake's out there, but you're probably busy doing something else too. And... Let's upload Bolero. Now, this, the original run of, of Cold Plague, I actually, I mean, I'd had the story written for quite a while. Oh, no, where's, 
Here's my good picture of John Valero. Um, full sized. Do I have to grab it from another source? I only have the token here. Uh, it's not very good quality because it's a little tiny token picture. So let me go try to find it. Um, yeah, I can't saw that. Let me see if I have another folder. But, you know, I our New Year's plans got canceled due to some illness. So I said, you know what? If anyone wants to, let's just jump on Roll20. I've got this idea for this Call of Cthulhu game that I want to run on Roll20 and start playing games and, and run at a convention. And uh, everybody was like, oh, yeah, sure, cool. I've got nothing else to do tonight. So I, I pretty much wrote this game up in... Yeah, I guess I just have the ping. PNG. Um, in a very short amount of time. And luckily they didn't finish it, so I had a few days to really make the ending a little bit more interesting. And then by the time I ran it, I already cut a bunch of stuff. Do I have that character picture? But it's kind of cool seeing it run with a bunch of different people and seeing how they interact with it and how they respond to it. All right, well, I guess I'll have to go find another picture of John, another picture of John Bolero. Oh, it was pretty easy to find before. Well, that's actually a pretty cool one, too. Oh, so I have everything. Even some of the same art. Well, I do have it on. Let's see if I can get it off roll 20. I should be able to. Maxwell. John Below. PNG. There we go. Yeah, see, won't let me won't let me take it back off roll twenty. I understand that's a, a thing. Let's see if I can just do a right click download. Uh, okay. I'll go. I can go to the character and always screenshot it too. That should be a good enough quality for this. Because it's going to be a tiny, tiny print. Okay. I'd like to give him his firearms, too. That's something I have to do before I export him. I'll upload it from downloads, then move it to downloads so I know where it is later. I'm sorry, desktop. There we go. And upload. There we go. As I said, not quite, not quite sure how it's going to read when it's printed black and white, but we shall see. Added weapons. Let's see. He had. He has his forty-five. Two. 
1911. And I think he has 36 bolt action. Oh, that one always doubles it. Did that the other day for me too. I don't think there's a save button here. Yep, that saved it. Character creation. And let's see what else. So I'm going to... Uh, characteristic updates, skill updates. I'm going to do some skill updates. This is good for leveling up a character, or in this case, as the GM, if I want to just add some stuff. I should give him knitting. Give him knitting as a, as a hobby. Actually, you know, one or two, like, real... Tough guys. That's one of their hobbies is they knit. Kind of like Danny Trejo and his cakes. Making cakes. This guy that just, he seems so scary, but he's like, it's totally chill. I'm going to spot hidden 45. I did want to give him a little bit more spot hidden. A little bit more stealth. He's not super stealthy, but he was a soldier in the field. Uh, give him a little bit more athletic skill. I think he had some swim, too. That I couldn't afford. So I did want to make him a little bit more of a physical character. So I went into the attributes and I edited those. Uh, drive auto. 65% electrical repair. 65%. Dodge disguise. I think he looks good. Credit rating climb. I just wanted to check if I could increase, increase that beyond its maximum. Yes. Oh, intimidate. Yeah, that's right. They have they have used this character to get information. The game's also different because now they have hard and extreme success ratings. And it used to be like just pass fail. And I'm glad they updated that. I mean, that makes it a much more modern game. Both the groups who played it who hadn't really played a lot of Cthulhu really liked the um, the skill system. And, and percentile is kind of dated, right? Percentile is kind of black and white and unforgiving, but that's also what's kind of nice about it, I, I think. Save changes. Cool. So now I'll uh, go back to the character control panel. Generate a grayscale character sheet. And there we have Mr. John Bolero. So again, I can all, I'm gonna go and add all this, this my story stuff, and I have that all already in another document. It's just gonna be cut and paste. But it at least for now gives me a basis. Do they have range? Oh, they do have range. 110. Okay, yeah. Yeah, 15 yards or 100 yards. Yes, yes, we know pistols are more effective at higher ranges than 15 yards, but the average person in a stressful situation, 5 to 10 yards is about what they can rely on to actually hit something. Despite what movies will show you of, you know, shooting a shooting a gun down a street and like 50 yards away it hits a tire on a car and the tire stops. All right, so have in there uh, let me take while well, I have it let me move that to another folder so we don't run into that again if I need that character portrait thanks folks for coming on and hanging out today it's a quiet quiet day but that's all right like I said this wasn't really planned I kind of just decided you know let me jump on and do a little do a little stream well, I work on this. This is the kind of stuff I can do in stream. When I'm doing the intensive content writing, I've really got to focus. I've really got to focus on the content writing. Let's change. All right, so let's see who's next. I have two doctors in this. One is research and one is practical. 
It makes sense for this scenario, but I've thought about adding something else besides yet another doctor to just round out the group. I haven't really come to a conclusion with that yet. And let's see who is next. Amanda Tice, also interesting and in explore. So the last person that played Anne McGraw just had her like sitting quietly in the corner, snorting cocaine the entire time and observing. It was, it was pretty, pretty amusing. I was like, I was like, okay, sure. We're, we're in the twenties. We can do this. We, we can do unrestrained substance abuse in the twenties. I'm thinking there might be another kind of character I might want to throw in there if I have time. So, let's do the name and all that first. Fernando Tice. Explore, uh, Residence is Hyannis, Place of Birth, why don't I give her for Queen, Portland, Maine, that's right. Portland, Maine, I haven't been to Portland, good friend Mel is from Maine, good friend in gaming, gaming group. Remember? Somebody intelligence to sixty. Um, Zadie. So education in this game matters because you get more of certain types of skill points with it. And and while, again, I understand that by our modern understanding the learning and all that, you know, I could, I could see people saying, well, that's not really fair. That's not really how it works. And I'm like, yeah, but again, it's kind of like in dealing with sanity in this game that this isn't meant to replicate real world modern sensibilities of mental health. It is just meant to uh, simulate a, a fiction genre and environment. 60, 70, 70, 70. Okay, good. So save and continue. Uh, process updates. Swim. Save. I thought I gave her a couple other languages. Wow, credit rating 55. Well, I guess you have to be rich to be an explorer, right? Uh, credit rating. Yeah, I gave her some firearm skills.
seeing things numerically also is deceiving. Languages. Yeah, you're French. French doesn't really play a part in this scenario. I think I have to assign it anyway. And again, I can go back and adjust all these points, but the reality is to. Twenty points left. You're five in history, five in jump. All right, is zero out or no? No. Oh, uh, coastal. Coincidentally, so for those of you just tuning in, I'm making up uh, greetings. I'm making up characters for the in. Well, I'm transcribing characters from the online version of Cold Plague to the convention version, which I will be. Running in a couple weeks. Not this weekend, but next weekend. Let's see archaeology a little bit. A little bit of anthropology. I think I forgot to give my anthropology professor anthropology in one run of the game. And the guy was like, how do I not have an anthropology, an anthropology professor? It's like, oh. Yeah, about that. Oops. So I just threw them, threw them some points, you know, on the fly. You have a 60, 75 or whatever. To a cult, a little bit of a cult, because they've traveled and seen some strange things. A little bit of brawl. They're not an extremely tough character. They still know how to fight a little bit, I think. I give them some knife fighting skills. How about that? Okay, yes, I know. I tap my points out, so I'm going to take a little bit out of that and throw a little more there. Do I need any other skills? Well, they should have some spot hidden, some lessons, some stealth. So that's all stuff I can add in the character creator. All right. Um, the investigator skills. So as I said, I know there's some stuff I already want them to use. I have a little bit more listen. A little more spot hidden. That's right, this is the totally non... Non... Uh, interactive, social, non-social character. A bit of stealth, survival coastal. Because that's, that's their whole thing, they're a survival expert. Swim. Throw. And track. So it might look like I'm kind of just arbitrarily giving them a bunch of extra skills. Their education score is low, so they don't get as many bonus skills to start. And again, like that doesn't, to me, that doesn't make sense in the context of an explorer. If you're talking about a professor, yes, the professor will get more of their personal skills and interests numerically quantified 
by the fact they've spent more time in school. Whereas the explorers spent less time in school, but they've spent time in the bush. They spent time in the field. So. And again, a lot of these are, are not are not necessarily immediately relevant to the game, this particular game, but they could be they could be situationally relevant. So let's save those changes. And uh, capture control panel. Let's add weapons. And each of these characters will get more equipment too. I mean, I kind of assume that they they have anything basic that they would want, you know, like, you know, flashlight. Okay, your explorer is going to have a flashlight. It'd be silly of me to go, no, you didn't write flashlight down. The person who explores ancient Mayan ruins doesn't have a flashlight with them. I mean, I guess it's possible. There plenty of days I, there was one day I got to school without my laptop. It had all my lessons in it for the day. Cat number two. This is the cat that is more interactive around this time. I'll go for about another half hour. Then I might get eaten by house pets. Now I know I have a man to tell you something here. So halfway done with this process, as I said, I still have to go through and add all their, their personal character notes, their equipment, but I have all that on another document. I just have to transfer it over, copy and paste it in, and I won't spend the time copying and pasting. I'd rather spend the next half hour maybe getting, knocking out the three other characters, which at this point I think I can do. I'll put the two doctors in. Maybe, maybe I'll put them in as like a forensic specialist instead of a doctor. That might be the way to go. And I might change them in the Roll20 game to forensics. Forensics and pharmacology. Fun stuff. Online character portraits for Amanda. Yes. It's pretty cool. Pretty cool portrait. I think everyone wants to play her because she's got a cool, cool portrait. I've also seen her played as a Scottish man. Person wasn't gone. No, no, I was the professor who became Scottish. That's right. Uh, Amanda became Amanda became a masculine figure in one of the games. Somebody decided, oh, don't want to play it. Play the characters woman. That's fine, whatever. All right, so save updates and let's take a look at the character sheet. we go there's Amanda Tice now for the most part I also let people take and I should give her a knife too um, I do let people take the character sheets with them because that's a fun kind of a fun way that they can keep the characters and remember the game and remember me Let me drop this Amanda out, put another one in with the knife in it. And that's easier to do, right, in this character creator here. And then just then throw another sheet up there because it they, it's all pre-calculated with all the equipment. They often, they often pick up other guns. That's the first thing they start doing. Are there any other weapons around? Now, again, we all, we all know in Call of Cthulhu, you're kind of like, yeah, sure, that, that's fine. Have another, have another machine gun, like... Uh, medium knife. Yeah, that's good. Medium knife is good. Carving. Yeah, it's something, all right. I, I, think, I think she might have a bigger... Whoops. Oops. I might have a bigger knife. Knife large machete. A machete's a little bit bigger than a knife, but... They don't have a knife that just says D6. It's either D4 or D8. weird well I'll give him the carving knife 
And then I can always change that too. Especially not a dagger or something like that. Reverting to. Reverting to D and D. I got my dagger and my sword. Oh, let me give him the yeah hatchet, and I'll just rename it. There we go. Hatchet or sickle D six. I mean, uh, sickle's properly a little bit larger, but that's all right. I kind of see what they're doing. Now it's going to be a knife. All right. Enough of that. Let's go back and get that get that thirty eight. Perfect. And now let's see the grayscale character sheet. And now, as you see, I could just put a I even alter this. Yeah, D D six D D five. Let's confuse things. Well, I mean, a knife is probably a D four. Yeah, D four plus two. All right, I guess that's. I'll change it to Bowie knife. I guess a knife in and of itself. I mean, it'll do some damage, but it's how you how skillful you are and how you deliver it. How much force you deliver with a hit. Oh, that's right. On the page. Let me go see if it updated here on the download. Again, I can spend the time doing that later. Call it a buck knife. A D four plus two. All right. All right. Amanda's all done. So I can knock out these other three characters. This is this is a cool interface. This doll's house. All right, dog, you have to go outside. A dog next to me, giving me a look. I'm gonna take an McGraw, and I think I'm actually right now gonna edit. Um, Anne McGraw forensics. That makes it sound more interesting, right? Forensics. There we go. All right, so let's look at Anne's skills, pop out the sheet, and I'll let the dog go. Come on, let's go outside. <laughs> but up next is William Gruber, the professor. Now I've been over. I'll work on it. Freestyle, freestyle. I understand why Roll20 doesn't give you the option to just randomly, you know, like print out all your characters, but I, I'm kind of like, other other virtual tabletops do it. It's just one of the, your features for subscription, and I have the pro subscription. And again, I'm not going to really worry about it, but I'm like, you know, it's so much easier if I could just export these. Watch them in, watch them implement it. Next month. Got 
really cold private message from a friend of mine. I mean, cold in like the best way. Like, oh man, I can't believe you said that. Inappropriate about political world events. <coughs> Looks rather funny, actually. So, where are we at with Amanda? Or Anne, I'm sorry. Anne McGraw. You might be thinking, this is an awfully Anglo-looking group. Just wait. That's right. She lives in Salem. I haven't had any haven't had any witch commentary yet from a player, which is amazing. Salem, um, MA and Brattleboro, Vermont. That's where she's originally from. Do they have forensics? Foreign correspondent, forensic surgeon. I mean, I, I can change that. See what skills they have. Yeah, that's pretty much what I wanted as far as skills. Okay, so yeah, I'll, I'll give her forensic surgeon. Even though I'll be changing the name to you know, forensics, forensic pathologist. Though I, I, at this time, this idea of a forensic pathologist was a little. It's not our modern, quite our modern definition of, of forensics. So 50, picture her being a bit scully-like in some ways. Though she got even a little bit creepier and more morose when people have played her, which is kind of interesting. Power. Really? Get rid of that hive of power? Ah, hasn't really impacted the, the game yet, so. You know what? I'm going to change. I'm gonna, especially being a person who might do medicinal, hands on physical things, I'll make her smaller and more dexterous. My education was pretty high. Luck was. Mm, not so high. Save and continue. Process updates. Credit rating. 40 is fine. Library use was definitely higher. Uh, library use. Uh, yeah, that's what I thought. Pretty high. Now, if I remember, this character did not really get used in that capacity much. Are you medicine 80, I think? and a little bit less. The language. Latin, yes. Though I don't want to blow too many points in that. Though again, I can alter this all later. Persuade. I don't like that the persuade was real high. I guess they are trying to make a, a Scully-esque character here. I think persuade stated a 10. Science biology was up there. See, so look at all the points to get right off the bat, largely due to their profession and their education. Science, biology, science, biology, science, biology.
First aid was pretty high, though. Biology, 55. That's right. That's a little, a little bit more here. Persuade 10, science, forensics. Um, yep. Yeah. Even decrease the medicine down because so we have the actual like hands on MD there. Science pharmacy is quite high. Uh, I'll be adjusting that later. This can all get adjusted later, so I just need to put the points in now. Oh, do I have, I have three points left? All right, so another 160 points to spend however I want. So that's the thing. And I, and I get the cool thing about this game is that it has always been about characters who are learned and cultured and, you know, the, the characters that are a little more heavy-handed are not necessarily the ones who benefit in this game unlike a lot of other games but at the same time I'm like yeah but a character should just have more points in that which is fine that's why I can just add more points in that So pharmacy. Okay. Forensics. Oh, did I? No, I'll change it later. Uh, biology. No, because I had a I had high biology before. I never high stealth. So this character was always in the background, kind of vanishing into the woodwork. Did I give this character psychoanalysis? No, she has no psychoanalysis, but she has psychology. Oh, wait, actually. Right. All right. So when I built the character earlier with the with the just kind of dropping points in based on a spread, it definitely is a little different, but not, not horrendously so. All right. So let's save this. The character does not have any weaponry. Well, aside from a whole bag full of drugs oh that's right I give her a scalpel that's funny just in case the player gets desperate and grabs a scalpel so that's that small knife that's even smaller that's like They have no skill to really use it in combat, but I thought it was amusing. Now, I'll list it as a rock, then I'll change it. Um, turn to control panel. Choose a portrait. Browse. And then my draw. There we go. All right, cool. Character control panel. 
generate the character sheet. And pop open Anne here. Just rename a couple things and add a couple things. Uh, rock. Let's call this. Is that a one D three? Might might kill a deep one with a scalpel. I don't know. Mm, you know what? I should go back and change some things. Change some things in the character generator online. I right, close and up for now. I think I wanted to give her a couple things. Um, update investigator skills. I think the spot, I wanted the spot hidden. That was just 50. Swim, throw, track, jump, brawl. A little bit of natural world. Yeah, I guess this is, I, th I think listen a little higher is what I wanted. Just because there's a reason in this scenario where a higher listen helps. Yeah, you know, it's a reality too that for years these these sheets had even less skill options. Oh, nope, don't want to delete that. I'll delete that. And you kind of just said, well, this sort of falls under biology. It's nice to have options, but there we go. Now we're going to change that to scalpel. On the machine itself. All right. And then the last two characters, the professor and the Save that. Two more characters, friends. Pop open William Gruber, the professor. This seems like tedium. It is a little bit. The 
creative aspects kind of fun but transferring transferring all this stuff over is is in fact necessary and kind of satisfying whoops see I wish you could just write in it's annoying 70, Constitution's 50. Power is also useful because you can resist certain psychic and magical attacks with it. Not that there are any of those in this game. In fact, I think it's kind of nice when characters resist. Sorry, it's locks 30. Sorry, Professor. Uh, Gruber. Let's say 52, 54. Ancient. Ancient person. 59. Oh, no. Now, the irony is the Professor gets all of these skills. Skill points. Ten points. Okay. But he gets uh, a multiplier on his skills again, which makes sense. I'll give him I'll give him archaeology and anthropology. I forgot to do it that one time. It was rather amusing. Library use, of course. Oh, unless he's gonna automatically get that. Yeah, he'll automatically get that. Uh, let's see what else was he good at. Language, not his own. Or is that gonna be included in the bonus too? History. So other language. Other language, Spanish. There's a reason. All right, credit rating really doesn't matter for this. See, at this point, it's kind of just breezing through, especially because these characters don't have any really specific equipment. Counting none. Let's see, that was an additional 140 points. So, what else did I give him? I gave him a little bit of a cult, right? And I did give him, actually, I gave him a reasonable amount of a cult. Uh, one, two, three, four.
So anthropology, archaeology, persuade. I give him a little bit of persuade. I mean, he has to write grants, right? Decided he was he used to hunt as a kid with his father in Austria. So that's why he has a little bit of a little bit of firearm. Spanish. English. Sorry, I don't know. We're Acadian. So I will not spot hidden. I'm going to touch the spot hidden. The cats give me a little bit of spot hidden. A little bit of psychology. because You do need it. And persuade. And again, I can, I can increase all this later. Actual world mechanical repair. Listen. Hi. Yes, I know. You're going to starve to death. You don't understand why I'm not feeding you yet. Almost. Oh, one more point to spend. More psychology. Oh, there we go. All right. Uh, let's see. Update investigator skills. Now, I did want to give them a little bit more. So, a little bit more listen. Again, because there are a couple points in this scenario where that's actually important. A little bit of natural world. Being a professor might have an understanding of it. Occult's fine. Um, his languages are fine. Higher history. German. Actually, Austrian. So yes, there's a slight difference farm credit rating and possible anthropology archaeology and I think that's about it did I want to give him a little did I give him the persuade 25 it's gonna 30 persuade all right Save changes. Upload the professor, then I'll knock out the doctor. And we're good to go. Like I said, the real fun is writing some of the backstory that comes into play during the game, but I'm not going to do all the transfer of that right now. Bones. Documents Pro Gym, online characters, William Gruber, there he is. Character control panel, and let's generate the character PDF. Also going to downloads. Take a quick look at it. Really? I remember I played one Call of Cthulhu game where the first thing the keeper did was take our character sheets and just erase half the sanity. And we all started in this in the middle of this situation, so it was it was kind of fun. All right, let's knock out Maxwell Degree, the doctor. Yeah. 
as you see there's another another cat the cat unfortunately is blends in with my usual choice of clothing no you don't chew on that being that he's convinced he's starving to death he's going to start chewing on wires that's how starved you are you're not starving come on you're pudgy not as pudgy as the other one so characters and create new character point by process freestyle here we go last but definitely not least dr degree he's a fun character Doctor Degree that got oh there he is. Perfect, okay. So that Maxwell Degree. It's funny, the experienced players that have played this have all gone like, I'm going to play the doctor, the professor. Whereas the couple like completely raw groups that I had play this were like, oh, I want to be the explorer, or the soldier. So again, and that's, and that's great because our reference came from all these characters that can actually do things. And another doctor. Doctor of medicine. I actually wish I could just drop these skills in. I mean, I guess, well, see, it won't let me get to the point of doing so. Oh, 60. It won't let me get to the point of being able to, to alter them until I go through the process of spending them, which is kind of the pain. I mean, if I'm going to do it, I might as well yeah, it doesn't make sense. He should have more power, whereas other people should have less power. But that's okay. Hey, luck. 50, right? 45 luck. Huh, I remembered that. That's rather odd. All right. Um. I replaced New Orleans from down south. All right, did I have New Orleans? Yes, New Orleans. There's some 38, degree. Uh, choose a skill. Obviously, I'm sure medicine or something. Psychoanalysis. He was the one character with a relatively high psychoanalysis skill. He's less bookish, though, than some of the others. First aid. Do I have first aid as an option? Or will that come with the package? That comes with the package. Let's see what his next highest one was. I mean, medicine, obviously, but... So, yeah, I guess medicine first aid is the package. Psychology, too. His next highest is libraries. All right, so I guess this still makes sense. First aid. All right, so yeah, then he gets all these, so... And 290 points. 60. 50. Language 
George Latin. And he doesn't have the high pharmacy. I mean, in theory, he'd have a little bit, but again. Give him a little more occult. Forty five. I give another couple points of psychoanalysis. Nah, actually, that's fine. And persuade. I give him a little bit of persuade, too. Good talker. Spot hidden. A little bit of history, just a little bit of natural world. A little more handgun. He grew up in New Orleans, traveled through dangerous situations to get to Boston. Okay, let's do it. This gets them approximately where they're at. And for those of you that are wondering, there are opportunities early in the game for them to acquire weapons. Put up Mr. Degree. Dark dog scratching at the door. For Mountains of Madness, the Arctic dog would fit right in. <coughs> See? Did that not upload? That's a small ML. Oh, no. Is it too big? Maybe it's too big. I did shrink some of these down. Maybe I didn't shrink this one down. Something's wrong. The file wasn't an image file. The size was too large. All right. So I'm going to do bit. Of course, the last one, right? I'm like all set to be like, all right, I'm done. Wrap up. That's why I lot the whole afternoon to this. Because <laughs> I knew that's what's going to happen. Documents. Again, thanks for everybody for tuning on. I've seen people popping on and off. It's great, great that you stopped on for this impromptu chat. Again, this was not scheduled. My regular chat will be Wednesday night, in which are going to be topical discussions. This is more just me sitting here working. Maxwell Degree, JPEG. How big is that? Yeah, that's pretty big. It's no bigger than... Uh, yeah, it is bigger. Oh, yes, it's much bigger. That would explain it. I'll shrink this down. It's a really nice picture. Some nice art. Tools. I posted some of what I was working on to one of the groups, and people are like, oh... Looks like a, what did he say? It's like a license plate, license, driver's license photo. I'm like, all right, we'll tell that to Chaosium. It's their art. There we go. So let me undo that. Tools, size. 
make it a little bit larger than that. Knock it down by half. That should do it. Yeah. All right. So now let's see if Maxwell degree works. Maxwell degree. JPEG. Yes, it's much smaller now. And there he is. Great. So character control panel, it's going to adjust a few skills. Oops, nope, sorry. Not characteristics. And you might be saying, well, you know, all the skills aren't even for all the investigators. And you're absolutely right. I mean, there, someone might have 20 more points than the other, and it has nothing to do with anything except that it makes sense for the scenario to have a little bit more, this character has a little bit more agency here. Well, he would definitely have more biology than that. Cool, navigate, listen. I think I want to get a little more listen than that. A little more perceptive. Uh, libraries, libraries is fine. There are some characters that that's what they do. They're researchers. First aid, look at them. Look at 65%. Well, first aid has come in handy. Characters have gotten hurt. Um, a little bit of anthropology. Oh, that's right. Did I, did I even arts and crafts? Let's see. Art craft. Saxophone. That's right. That's the big thing is he plays the saxophone. I think I gave him like a 60 or something in that just for the fun of it. Uh, let's see. He's a doctor. So he's 45. He's not as good at saxophone as he is on other things. That's okay. Stealth, survival, swim. I mean, it's funny because so stealth is one of those things like almost every character ends up with some because it's so useful. And I think there's this now common common con assumption that, oh, well, it's easy to sneak inside. Well, I was in the woods for a little bit yesterday on winter leaves. And I tried, you know, let me try sneaking here and moving silently. No chance. No chance. The amount of skill it takes to do that yeah, I think we I think we forget that in our modern age. That unless you do something and practice it. Uh, did I want to give him a Did I want to give him a firearm? He's also a jazz musician. He should have a firearm. Let me tap out of Maxwell. He and the professor would be the only unarmed characters. Let's see, Anne's got a scalpel. Not that this even matters for the game. I mean, <gasps> don't worry, he's fine. He'll be in momentarily and eating, and he'll be very happy. I'm going to give him a Derringer. Everyone likes a Derringer. I'll give him an auto, semi automatic. No, I won't give him a semi automatic. 22, 25 Derringer. There we go. We've also gotten this delusion about how. how quickly humans can avoid damage from being shot i'm watching some show the other day and the guy doesn't you know guy gets shot and it's you know it's not a vital not not a you know really vital only they're like oh well it missed all the internal organs you still had a nine millimeter go through you you're 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 not getting up and like riding around on your motorcycle and like you know doing all this action movie stuff the next day 
So, you know, I'm looking at a 25 Derringer. I'm like, oh, 25 Derringer. How much is that going to hurt? I'm like, shot at all really hurts. All right. I think our cast of characters, at least the statistical end of it, is done. I'm going to move these all to the Total Con Cold Plague folder. Folder. Pro GM, where are you? Total Con Pro GM folder. All right, there you are. Right where I put you. Folder total con. Uh, that another new folder. These cats are getting really upset. All right, they're all looking good. Double check them later. A bunch of characters, cast of characters here. All right, friends. Thanks very much for tuning in. It's impromptu work stream. Hopefully you've seen it and will spread the news and spread the joy. And hopefully you will have your friends take a look at it if they have not already. So we'll go to the like and subscribe portion. From the Tomes, you've watched From the Tomes on Twitch. From Fox and Boar Games, find me at pat patreon.com, Fox and Boar Games. Fox and Boar Games .com. And YouTube, at Fox and Boar Games. Also, at Fox and Boar Games, Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Thank you all very much for liking and subscribing. Probably won't be on again this week, but we'll be back next week with a Wednesday night chat, possibly an interim pop-up chat like this. Please like and subscribe and check out the various social medias that you see me on. Uh, follow along at foxandboardgames.com for blog updates and convention report in the next two weeks. Go to Instagram because I'll be having some videos from the convention probably appearing on Instagram. Some short live streams, just reporting in, letting everyone know how it's going. And of course, if you're really interested, stop by the Patreon. And there's a lot of cool game content coming up. Thank you all very much. I appreciate the support. Have a great day.